Hi guys, so today we're going to talk about some new Daniel Smith watercolours. I am using them to put in this new palette. So uh, you can see here I have done some preliminary kind of swatches in this um, swatch book that I just made from a couple of book rings from Walmart and the Walmart paper. And I like to always have this on hand um, just to do these kind of swatches. But before we get into the video as well, I just want to say welcome to everyone who has come over from Irit's channel and a huge thank you to Irit for the shout out. That was so kind and it was a really nice surprise yesterday morning when I woke up. I'm so happy to be part of a community where we can all share and help each other and um, inspire each other. So I really appreciate that again, Irit. And um for anyone who is here from her channel so um thanks for being here and i'm not the best presenter on youtube but um hopefully you will find some inspiring things here as well okay so let's get into the video so this is um my sort of preliminary swatch book and the cut we're going to go through all the colors that i have up so there's five new colors here and there's a couple and I also got a Winsor & Newton color so what I was trying to figure you can see the gorgeous um, that's duochrome lapis sunlight from Daniel Smith and then the duochrome aqua aquamarine I think so they're really really gorgeous colors and I've been thinking about the duochrome lapis sunlight for actually several years since I first watched the swatch cards and I really wasn't sure which way to go there are a couple of colors that are fairly similar to that, but I ended up getting that one. Um, it's the one that I had kind of thought um, stood out the most. And so I'm really happy uh, with that. And I, I don't know now why it took me so long to get it, but I'll show you a couple of interesting things about it and how you can make some of these colors go further um, in later on in the video as well. So. This is my regular palette. That's my main palette and it's got all my favorite colors in it. So I have actually switched out three of the colors, which I will let you know. But um, this is a palette. I haven't actually gotten the palette for it yet. So it's just kind of in this tin. And uh, these are some, some colors that I wanted to use and incorporate in paintings. But um, because they're not in my main palette, you know, I wanted just another sort of I guess it's a supplementary it's a specialty palette um, but yeah so anyway it's not going to be my main palette on my channel I'm still going to use the one that I regularly use but it will sometimes make an appearance so one of the colors that I got was Bordeaux and I have been again thinking about this one for a long time um, and you can see there the, the swatches I'm not I wasn't entirely happy with it not that I'm not happy with it as a color but uh, I don't know that it's really a color for me that I'm going to use all the time I think it's probably all right to have there as a color if I need something but I was more looking for something um, in that kind of the Wallace and Seymour velvet rose to see if it was a sort of more affordable and sort of more available option for it but I think it's slightly different and so like, for example, this here is the Lunar Violet and the Hematite Violet. So I got the Lunar Violet from Daniel Smith. Again, I've been thinking about it for a long time and it makes like a shadow violet, which I really love. So it doesn't have the, the blue that settles into it. So I was really happy about that. And then these are some of my favorite mixes uh, at the minute. And some of those come from some of these new colors that... Um, we're going to talk about today so uh, we'll, we'll get into the swatching now so I've been using this uh, it's a mixed media sketchbook from um, Cornelison and it's a really beautiful one I actually wish the landscape format is a little bit tricky for me I wish they had the same thing in a portrait format um, it's even kind of hard to move around on the desk and stuff but I really love the aesthetic of it and I love the paper inside it so it's not watercolor paper but the watercolor works really beautifully on it 
and I will link it below and I'm what I'm just doing here is I always kind of create a heading for the page that we're working on and sometimes I use the gold ink the winter Newton gold drawing ink and my dip pen today I am using a fountain pen and the wink of Stella um, it's like a, a sparkle brush so it doesn't actually have a color and sometimes I really like to use this as a water brush so you get uh, a little bit of that sparkle in the, uh, the painting um, so I'm not, I'm not sure that it came out really that well there but it's just a very understated sparkle and it's something I've really enjoyed for a few years and I, I like to use it in my journals. So just for a, a little touch of something extra and understated. So the first uh, color that we're using here is the Daniel Smith Lunar Violet. So uh, you can use, uh, if you have a Lunar Black or a Mars Black, that really granulating black, you can mix this with a Violet and get a similar thing but I really liked the tone of this so and I think that I will just get a lot more use out of it as a convenience mix rather than the uh, buying them separately so I'm quite happy with it so the next color here is uh, Daniel Smith raw umber violet now I bought two colors to see if we could um, get a more available and affordable option for the porphyry violet ochre so i know i use that all the time and it is hard to come by so this is a pretty good um, option and i actually really like it we'll talk about it a little bit more this next one is bordeaux it's one we've already touched on i do like it but um i think the staining colors just aren't really for me like i I'll show you a bit later on. I would probably rather put in there the Holbein Lilac or the Cobalt Violet um, in with this same color scheme. Just change that one color and then add a uh, French Ochre. And that's more of my type of a color scheme. So more like on the paper that I showed you in the beginning in the Ringbound swatch book. So this is um, Duochrome Aquamarine. This is also a gorgeous one I've been thinking about for a while. So I feel like, um, you know, this channel is quite new, but these colors are quite old to me and I have been collecting them for about five or six years and I haven't really restocked any Daniel Smiths for in quite a few years. And so I thought this year I would, I actually began the year and you can see this one here is Duochrome Lapis Sunlight, which again it is is gorgeous I, I can't recommend this enough but um, I began this year by creating a palette for my sister and I collected colors for her for several months her birthday's in May and then after that I thought I would relook at a, a palette for myself and see if there were any other colors so I've been slowly collecting these colors since then and I say this all the time, but my, my art budget is about $20 or $30 a week. Sometimes not even that. It might just be one tube of paint or one bottle of ink. So um, I think that slow and steady is a good way to go with uh, art supplies. So you don't sort of over accumulate and you can just see if the direction that you're going in is the, you know, the one that you want to go in. So there I showed you, uh, there's two actual options here that I have for, um, you know, different options for the Porphyry Violet Ochre. So I'm going to swatch a few things here. The first one that we're swatching is Hematite Violet. So this one is from Earth Mineral Arts. It is a beautiful rendition, but I think um, the Daniel Smith one is probably more readily available and it's a really gorgeous color as well. So the next one here this is my favorite porphyry violet ochre i'm always talking about it on the channel i got this one from colors of the iron range so i'll link all this below um but it's expensive and it's hard to come by and i don't want to use it all the time for mixing and sort of waste it so I i've been looking for options and it's also hard for some of you who aren't in the us uh, and with international shipping and things like that so this next one is the Daniel Smith Raw Umber Violet, which I really love. 
And then this next one here is the Windsor & Newton Kaput Mortuum. So this is a little bit cheaper. You can get the 5mm tubes for 5 or $6, whereas the um, Raw Umber Violet is, I think, around $12 for a 15mm tube. So it is a really good value if you want to try a color like this. Um, it's it's not exact. You can see the porphyry violet ochre why I like it. It's a very clear undertones and it's um, it's just quite pretty. But th these other two are really good. Um, I I like both of them. I like all the colors, all the four colors that I swatched there. So so i think i'm going to have no trouble getting through all of those tubes so what i have done here is swatch the lunar violet with the raw umber violet and that is my kind of shadow violet that i really like and then the next thing i did is the kaput mortuum with white so i use the grumbacker titanium white i really love it it's so creamy to re-wet um and it just makes the paints look really beautiful so the yeah so that's the next thing i did and it creates this really smoky kind of uh color i really love it and what i am doing now is using the let's see so i'm using the raw umber violet and shell pink by holbein and you can see you get a fairly similar result there so if you have either of any of these colors i'm just kind of trying to show you that they're fairly interchangeable so you don't necessarily have to have one you can have some version of it um, you can see they're they're my favorite so potter's pink and pearl white uh, anyway i think we will um I'm just kind of showing you that color with those three colors. It, it's going to be a little four color palette. So I am going to swatch that out for you in a minute. But the purpose of these swatches and these colors and the color mixing is kind of to show you that you don't have to have the exact colors that I'm showing here. You can have similar colors and do similar things with them or figure out ways to mix similar things with what you have. So. You can see like in the swatches there, I have mixed all three colors fairly similarly with different things and they all come out really beautifully. So we're going to go through quite a few different variations of ways you can use these colors. Okay, so now I'm going to swatch the Kaput Mortuum with the Hematite. This is Daniel Smith Hematite. So I love this. I love having it in my palette. And we're going to use this in, and create our own violet hematite. So if you have both of these colors, you don't necessarily need a violet hematite. You can mix them. Or, you know, if you have like a raw umber violet and the hematite. And what I'm going to show you next is that you can also use art graph, the art graph charcoal. So if you have an art graph, the one in the tin sorry about that so where was i so if you have the art graph um water soluble charcoal or graphite you'll be able to use that sort of instead of the hematite so the hematite does have I'll, I'll swatch them in a minute it does have a little bit of a brown undertone but you could also mix in a little bit of brown to get that as well so the purpose of these videos i don't want you to think you've got to go out and buy a bunch of new colors but I'm just kind of trying to show you different ways that you can hopefully create some of these mixes with what you already have. And this is actually one of my favorite parts. So I am swatching out some of my favorite mixes to create with these colors or, you know, my favorite mixes at the minute. So the first one is from the last video. That's Potter's Pink and Pearl White. It makes this beautiful like pink champagne color. And then we're going to use the Kaput Mortuum and White. So I want, I want you to see how versatile and pretty these colors can be. And this is the way that I like to use them. So I don't necessarily use them um, at full strength in paintings. I mix them into these really creamy, smoky colors. So the next one we're mixing here is the Raw Umber Violet, the Daniel Smith Raw Umber Violet and the Daniel Smith Lunar Violet. And again, like I'm getting that really pretty uh, kind of smoky color that I really love. And then the last one here to kind of complete this little eyeshadow palette is 
uh, Holbein Lilac and Daniel Smith Sedona. And so when I first uh, sit, sat down to record this video, I wasn't actually going to do any painting. I was just going to swatch out the colors. And um, as it kind of went on, I, I really wanted to just quickly do a very loose and quick color study with these colors to kind of show you how I'll be using them. So you can go back to the how to paint an iris video for a proper kind of tutorial on how I create these irises and um, you know it'll show you and explain through the shapes and everything but I'm just going to let you watch and I'm just it really only took me five or ten minutes and I just wanted to get some shapes and colors on the paper and just have a go. I really love it when you get to that point and your palette is just so inviting and you just want to kind of sit there and splash some paint around so that is kind of what I'm doing now and I also have been thinking about some dark florals and creating dark floral backgrounds so you can see the difference here as well I'll go back to that but um, the raw umber violet does have sort of this violet but it's almost got like a brown separation like a French ochre separation that comes out of it so um, if you don't like that the kaput mortuum's the way to go I really don't mind it because I kind of use French ochre a lot anyway but you can see here this is the art graph that I was talking about so I do have this I actually um, cut some out and I've put it in this little half pan here so it's more readily available and I find that I use it a lot more um, being like that so I'm, I, I actually thought I was gonna paint next but I'm still swatching so this is the hematite and the art graph and I'm just going to sort of swatch these here and show you the difference. So for one thing you can see how dark you can get the art graph there but um, I'm going to try and do them a little bit of a similar consistency there so that you can see when I pull it up close. The art graph has a little bit more of a cooler tone, a little bit more blue undertones and then the hematite has some brown undertones so they're pretty similar. You can create like I said you can create more like a hematite by adding a little bit of brown to it but they're both going to do a pretty similar thing so here I have swatched I have mixed let's see the kaput mortuum with the art graph and then I'm going to put the hematite underneath it the hematite violet and they are a pretty close match so um yeah it's it's pretty um it's a pretty good way to go and I actually really love how versatile the kaput mortuum is so if you uh, mix it with the art graph it becomes more like a hematite violet you can mix it with the white and it can become that really beautiful soft smoky color so and then here I have actually mixed potter's pink with art graph and then you can see you get something similar to the porphyry violet as well So we are going to go on to the painting portion now and like I said I've been wanting to do some sort of dark floral backgrounds for a while and so I just put these colors down to kind of show you how I would use them in a painting so again like I said this is very quick um, and it's not like accurate so if you want to learn more about how to paint this accurately you want to go and check out the how to paint an iris video but uh, this is just how I'm going to use them and then I also try putting the lunar violet behind some of it as well just to see how that will work and then we also put some of the duochrome lapis sunlight on top 
and um, just really see that sparkle come to life.
So you can see here that I've finished the painting. I have pulled out this swatch book again to kind of show you the difference here in uh, my sort of color stories that I would choose. So that's one reason I like these swatch books too, is that I can create like mixes and <clears throat> sorry, mixes and color stories and see whether or not I prefer them uh, in an actual painting before I create the painting. So here are my Daniel Smith uh, dot card little color swatches. Here's one of the ways I swatched them. And you can see how much the duochrome lapis sunlight just really shines there. I feel like when you first swatch the dot cards, it's so overwhelming. There's so many beautiful colors and you're not really sure how to pick or things like that. But I tend to, I'm not a, um, what's the word? Uh, you know, I like to take a long time to figure things out and shop. Uh, so you can see there like the duochrome green pearl and the duochrome turquoise are two of my favorites. And I believe that that is the duochrome lapis sunlight mixed in with a green and a turquoise. So if you get the one color, you can actually create some of these other colors as well. So that's one thing I really love about the interference colors. The My sister really loves the Cabo blue one. And I think that's the interference gold mixed in with a blue. So... So I think if you get one of the, the colors there, you can actually make quite a few of the colors with that. So I really love that about them. We actually have the Interference Blue, the Interference Lilac, which I love as well. And Turner's, Turner Artist Watercolors on Jerry's, I'll try and link all this below. They do have um, their Interference Colors on sale for $6 at the minute. So you get a little bit less than the Daniel Smith ones, but it's a really good uh, way to try some of those colors and like I was saying I'm not an impulse shopper I like to think about things for quite a while before I and keep them on my wish list and see if they stay there if they stay relevant um, or if I just forget about them so here I'm trying to show you all the different colors the naphthamide maroon and the different like perylene violets next to the Bordeaux so I really wanted to do this video and get a couple of these colors because I'm always trying to give you um, kind of something else you can use instead of the porphyry violet. And I think the perylene violet's a little bit of a different color. It's more like a mixture of the Bordeaux and the porphyry violet. Um, so I wanted to get something that's a little bit closer to that so that I know kind of exactly what to tell you. Instead of just kind of always saying, oh, it's a little bit like this, I can now sort of say for certain that I really love these colors too as well. And I will be, you know, very easily be able to go through these tubes of colors. Um, you can see that that's the beautiful duochrome lapis sunlight. So it even looks so gorgeous just in the um, half pan there in the palette. But uh, that's all for today guys. I think um, I have covered everything I wanted to. I'm sorry this video has taken a while. I I really wasn't sure how to um, edit and get this all together in a way. I hope it's been like coherent um, and kind of all made sense what I was trying to kind of show here and I hope it's been helpful and useful. Uh, other than that, I think um, it's my mum's birthday this week, so I'm not sure if I'll get another video up, uh, but I'm going to put in a little clip at the end of the shadows video. It's going to come up really beautifully, so I think you're going to love that. And I'm sort of compiling all different types of shadows and different times of day and things like that. So, um, and that was the difference there. You could see the lunar violet and the lamp black as well, the was it the lunar lunar black as well so um yeah this is just kind of a sneak peek so once this is all finished i will swatch this out for you as well and so i was i also inserted a clip at the end i was just sitting waiting in the um walmart car park the other night and i feel like this is the total current vibe of everything so i just thought it was interesting and i will put the clip in there and I hope you guys have a nice week and so thank you again to Erit and all of you for your beautiful comments and being so supportive and lovely bye mm -hmm.